So welcome everyone to Accreditation 101. Uh, this uh, webinar really is all about the basics of CQL accreditation. Uh, we'll talk about a number of different things, but uh, the importance of accreditation, um, the CQL difference, uh, different options that are available, as well as how CQL tools and practices are really integrated into our approach. My name, like Seth said, is Elizabeth Seitz, and I'm a Quality Enhancement Specialist with CQL. Um, joining us today as well is um, Catherine Dunbar, Vice President of Accreditation. Hello, and, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And also Gretchen Black, Manager of Partner Engagement. Good afternoon, everyone. So we, want, we would like to do a quick poll and Seth is gonna launch our poll. So we'd love to hear from everyone. But what best describes your experience with accreditation? Are you looking at different accreditation bodies? You're not currently accredited with CQL or maybe you just recently engaged with us for accreditation. And of course my answer, um, you know, will there be cookies? So. Okay, Seth, give it about a couple more seconds and then if you could end our polling and let's see where we're at. Okay, so it looks like um, many of you um, are not currently accredited by CQL, um, but then right behind that, um, we have a good number of people that are with us that are currently accredited by CQL. So um, no matter where you're at in the process, we're excited to have you all here. And of course, uh, the eight of you that share my sentiment of will there be cookies. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, we are really excited, no matter again, your status, uh, we're, we're excited to have you here. So what we wanna do is uh, I wanna start with a short, um, it's about six minute video on the history of CQL. The history of CQL, the Council on Quality and Leadership. Since 1969, CQL has been a leader in working with human service organizations and systems throughout the world to continuously define, measure, and improve quality of life and quality of services for youth, adults, and older adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and psychiatric disabilities. CQL's vision is a world of dignity, opportunity, and community for all people. CQL believes that every person deserves respect, dignity, opportunity, and to be included in the community, whether they have a disability or not. That vision drives our mission of being dedicated to the definition, measurement, and improvement of personal quality of life. CQL has a long and rich history of conducting accreditation, training, certification, research, and consultation. We were formed in response to the injustices and deplorable treatment of people in public institutions being brought to light in the late 60s, early 70s. In 1960, a National Planning Committee under the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Hospitals, now the Joint Commission, including industry leaders like AAIDD, the ARC, the Council for Exceptional Children, and United Cerebral Palsy, led to the creation of the organization which is now known as CQL, the Council on Quality and Leadership. The first edition of standards, which contained over 700, was developed by CQL in the early 1970s in an effort to end the inhumane treatment and abuse of people with intellectual disabilities in state institutions. CQL then took on a leadership role in developing expectations for community-based services, which were the basis for landmark court decisions like Wyatt v. Stickney. 
federal courts later merged CQL standards into legal settlements in Texas, North Dakota, California, Arkansas, West Virginia, and other states. CQL was reorganized as an independent, not-for-profit organization in 1979, most commonly known as the Accreditation Council. Anchor and the Autism Society were added to the founding team of organizations at this time. CQL continued to develop new and updated national consensus standards throughout the 1980s. The Healthcare Financing Administration, HICFA, now known as Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, based its regulations on the CQL standards, which were ultimately published in CQL's 1984 edition of Standards for Services. In 1987, the Revised Standards for Services for People with Developmental Disabilities was published. In 1990, CQL began work on what were then called the Outcome-Based Performance Measures, now known as the Personal Outcome Measures. We will talk more about them in just a minute. In 1997, the organization was renamed the Council on Quality and Leadership, or CQL. The Quality Measures Model was introduced in 2005 integrating multiple CQL tools, including shared values, basic assurances, responsive services, personal outcome measures, and community life, all into one cohesive package. CQL's What Really Matters initiative came to life in 2010 and outlined 34 success indicators that characterize person-centered supports and promote personal quality of life outcomes, which together result in person-centered excellence. Now back to the personal outcome measures. In the early 1990s, CQL realized that people who use services needed to be included at the table. CQL began work on the now internationally recognized personal outcome measures. Some people refer to the tool as the POM. CQL invited people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, people with psychiatric disabilities, families, and other thought leaders to participate in focus groups to discuss quality measures. There was a big difference in what people and their families wanted compared with what professionals wanted. The personal outcome measures were developed and piloted in two states, at three organizations, and then field tested in the U.S. and Canada. In 1993, the first POM tool with 30 outcomes was published. Over the years, data analysis led to the combination of several outcomes reducing the number to 25, and then to the 21 we have today. The personal outcome measures were revalidated in 2017 and reorganized under five factors. The CQL journey continues with the daily work of establishing real connections between disabilities theory and practice. The CQL portal data system now contains tens of thousands of POM interviews, as well as hundreds of basic assurances assessments. Quality of life is why CQL is committed to partnering with providers and systems for organizational transformation. CQL currently accredits more than 350 um, organizations throughout uh, 25 states in the U.S., um, as well as in Canada, Ireland, and New Zealand. And actually, a full list of our um, partnering organizations are available on our website um, should you want to take a look. So now I'm going to turn it over to um, Catherine to talk about the CQL difference. Hello again, everyone. Just want to take a few minutes to talk about the difference that um, CQL accreditation can make on your organization. And through an open, honest, and unbiased evaluation, accreditation equips organizations with really valuable information and ac action steps for improvement. 
We found that when an organization relies on their own internal review of operations, they may unintentionally allow the investment that they have in their organization to influence their outlook. Internal review also limits an organization to its pre-existing base of knowledge and insight, whereas accreditation uh, helps you aggregate the best practices from other organizations and to learn from other organizations. Our process here at CQL isn't focused on paper, we are focused on people. Along with reviewing organi organizational policies and procedures, we use proprietary and trademark tools to ensure that these policies are actually playing out in agency supports and more importantly, in the lives of the people receiving those supports. Your accreditation experience with CQL doesn't begin and end with the on-site visit. We embrace a valued partnership with those who have achieved accreditation throughout the accre entire accreditation term. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in future slides. CQL offers ongoing support, guidance, resources, check-ins, and insights for the organizations with whom we work. CQL's Quality Enhancement Specialist has diverse areas of experience and work with hundreds of organizations across the globe. They bring together the best practices they have witnessed at other agencies and share how you can implement them at your own organization. Most of our staff have been on the uh, provider side of the table, and many of our staff, when they worked at that agency, were accredited by CQL. The scope of other accrediting bodies can be limiting. CQL does not provide programmatic level of accreditation of a specific service area. We really want to encompass the entire organization as true transformation is predicated on change at all levels. All stakeholders take on an important role in the accreditation as it affects impact each and every person connected to the agency. <clears throat> We are also not a deficiency-driven process. We work with organizations to help improve supports and services by discovering areas of excellence and areas of improvement. We call this an appreciative inquiry approach where we work with you to apply lessons learned from the strongest aspects of your agency and apply them to those areas where growth may be needed. Organizations that partner with us use data collected through CQL's proprietary tools to inform their decision-making and to the assess the return on their investments. If an organization is evaluating the effectiveness of a recent in initiative or planning for a new one in the future, they can turn to evidence-based information and analyze data for planning and monitoring purposes. The information gathered and data collected can also be used at the individual level in creating person-centered plans and tracking progress. Next slide, please. We have found through our work that our approach to accreditation um, is more meaningful for organizations and it impacts all levels of an organization. We also encourage agencies to really integrate their data and to become a data informed agency. And we work with you to discover data that is meaningful to your organization that you can use to analyze to improve services. Um, our partnership with agencies extends beyond, you know, just the accreditation. You have access to the research that we have done. You have access to um, free webinars and other training offerings, and of course, the ongoing consultation. The appreciative inquiry process really does help replicate success. Nobody wants to, you know, hear that they're, they're doing terrible things, that they really strive on and they grow based on their successes. So we help you find those successes and we help you celebrate those successes and we help you take those successes and replicate them throughout the agency. We also show you how you can use those successes to um, improve areas where you want to improve. So some of the benefits for organizations, next slide, please. Um, there's a lot that goes into the accreditation process and you'll learn more about that later in today's presentation. Some of the things that we do is, we'll talk a lot about data later, so I'm not gonna emphasize that now, 
But we really want organizations to demonstrate their commitment to person-centered planning, person-directed planning. Uh, we want you to use uh, internationally recognized tools. Uh, we certainly uh, share a lot of best practices. Our staff have learned uh, from other organizations. Uh, and that's another wonderful thing about our process. We are a learning agency. And uh, we learn from every organization that we work with. Um, we really want agencies to support people to improve the quality of their lives as defined by them. And it's also the uh, external validation that we talked about earlier uh, in the introduction. Next slide, please. I'm going to briefly, very briefly, describe our uh, current tools that we use for accreditation. These will be covered in more detail during an upcoming web webinar. So we use the basic assurances and that is uh, the foundation of accreditation. And these are the non-negotiables that agencies should offer. Uh, we also use the personal outcome measures, which is another foundational tool that um, where you have conversations with people and you learn about them and you try to understand and measure their personally defined outcomes. Uh, we also use the shared values, which is, is an alignment of mission, vision, and values. And we also use the community life for um, really looking at the impact that an organization has on the communities in which it provides services. So next, we're going to talk about the different options that you have with accreditation. And we'll go into those uh, briefly. There's more information, of course, available on our website. Uh, we'll start with the systems accreditation. This is an accreditation that is really for agencies that don't, uh, that are currently not providing services, that they're just getting started and either the state tells them that they need to they need an accreditation or because they just want to make sure that they're getting off on the right foot um, we look at only the policies and procedures uh, we cannot yet look at practices and how those policies and procedures are being implemented because they aren't you know providing services yet there is a focus on the basic assurances and there will be, this is a, an offsite visit where we work with the agency uh, via Zoom or phone call or uh, whatever platform uh, the agency wants to use. And we uh, support the agency in develop, developing policies and procedures that will uh, set them on the right path for providing services. The next type of accreditation is our quality assurance accreditation. And this is a three-year term with two mid-cycle visits. Uh, this is intended for organizations that are new to CQL, although we have also found that it is really ideal for organizations which have experienced some leadership change or if they need to just kind of get back to where um, they started with their process and they you know, want to get back to basics. Uh, we focus here on, uh, the, of course, the basic assurances, and we introduce the personal outcome measures. And we really want to look at um, those policies and procedures and practices that agencies have in place and how they're impacting people. We introduce the shared values at this point. And we also, of course, during this, um, provide ongoing support and guidance. The next type of accreditation is person-centered excellence accreditation. And um, a few years ago, we uh, really started ensuring that people had the quality assurance uh, type of accreditation prior to joining the, the person-centered excellence accreditation to really ensure that those foundations are in place and are strong for an agency. Um, we this. Accreditation is a four-year term with one on-site visit and two off-site. Those are usually done via Zoom or Teams or 
just a conference call. Um, it is reserved for organizations uh, who are experienced with CQL accreditation. We focus on the personal outcome measures, both for personal planning, but also for organizational planning. We work with you to use the data that you're collecting using the personal outcome measures to really guide your agency uh, in its uh, systems and practices. Uh, we also support agencies to really establish a more robust integrated quality management system. And the agency at this type of accreditation is, uh, there's accountability for the shared values. And then the biggest difference with this accreditation besides the shared values is really engaging the stakeholders. And there's a stakeholder meeting during the accreditation where the agency invites um, others connected to their organization to give them insight into where the agency should head into the future. The last accreditation option is uh, person-centered excellence with distinction. And this is uh, the highest level of accreditation that an organization can achieve. And a few years ago, we also changed uh, the eligibility criteria for persons and excellence with distinction. And it is also a four year term with uh, mid cycle visits. Uh, it is only for organizations that have had experience with CQL that are using the personal outcome measures via a certified interviewer and they have fully implemented the CQL tools. Uh, there's really a, a much bigger emphasis on how the agency uses data and how that data drives the organization. Uh, we also focus on the impact the organization has made and how the organization has transformed uh, in response to accreditation and our tools. Uh, the organization also has to demonstrate advocacy, innovation, and, and um, really supporting people where they're at and supporting them to live the lives that they want. This also has um, a component of engaging stakeholders to make a plan based on uh, 34 different um, criteria. You get to choose those criteria, you don't have to do all 34. And the Another difference with the PCE with distinction is that accreditation is not determined only by the review team. Uh, that information goes to a panel made up of different experts at CQL, and the panel and the team discuss uh, the results of the accreditation, and then the panel makes a decision, and then we let the agency know what that decision was. Uh, now I would like to introduce um, Gretchen Block, our Manager of Partner Engagement. Gretchen. Thank you, Catherine. Hello again, everyone. So uh, we love this slide at CQL and just wanted to share it with you. It is a graphic facilitation that was created by someone from Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota. It illustrates the journey that they're on. And it was drawn by one of their many talented staff during their closing accreditation meeting last March. On the next slide, you will get a sense of the steps in the journey that you will be on from the first call that you make to us and forward. So on the next slide, just to give you a rundown of the steps to take, head on over to our website and go to the accreditation tab. You're going to be able to select from multiple accreditation options. At the top of each page, you'll see a get started button. That will take you to our accreditation inquiry page. If you complete and submit an inquiry, I will receive your inquiry directly and I'm going to reach out to you and we're going to have a conversation about accreditation, and any and all questions you have about a possible partnership with CQL. At the end of this webinar, you will see my email address and direct line. I welcome you to use either of those at any time to connect.
So if you determine that a partnership with CQL is the right next step for you, we're going to provide you with our request for engagement. That is our application for accreditation. When we receive a completed request for engagement from you, along with applicable fees, we're going to begin the process of reviewing your request for engagement and then get you on our schedule. It is important to note though that accreditation costs are based on the number of people an organization serves. So I can assist you with what that would look like specifically for you anytime you'd like to reach out and chat about that. We also look at the diversity of services that an organization offers and in some cases geography, especially if an organization is providing services in multiple states, counties, provinces, etc. So once you've been scheduled for your first activity or visit, you will receive a formal letter of engagement outlining the details of the accreditation. That will include things like dates, cost, all of that. Next slide, please. We always want to encourage organizations to submit your request for engagement really a good six months in advance of when you'd like your first visit to occur. This is going to ensure you get your preferred dates and we have plenty of time to work together to prepare. We never schedule you at a time that does not work for you and we don't show up unannounced. So we want to make sure we are available when it works best for you. During the time leading up to your first visit, you're going to be enrolled in Portal, which is CQL's data system. We're going to ask you to complete a self-assessment of those basic assurances that Catherine mentioned earlier. And that assessment will need to be completed prior to your first official visit. We're going to provide you with user guides and video tutorials on how to use Portal. You may have multiple users enrolled in Portal to help you complete that self-assessment. We're also going to set up an initial planning call between myself and the person or persons from your organization that are leading and coordinating the preparation efforts. After that conversation happens, you are going to get multiple documents and manuals applicable to the accreditation option that you have been scheduled for. Then at that point, I'm going to pass you along to one of our many talented quality enhancement specialists for further planning. Elizabeth Seitz being one of them. So Elizabeth, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you, Gretchen. Um, so at this point, um, we have been scheduled um, and what we'll do as whoever is designated the lead quality enhancement specialist or lead QES, uh, will reach out to the organizational contact to set up uh, a time to do a planning call. Uh, the planning call typically lasts about an hour and a half um, but this is where we really start getting in kind of the nuts and bolts and the details of the accreditation visit. So, you know, that planning call will include introductions. So we'll learn more about the organization, your services, um, geography, logistics, uh, and, and kind of get a well-rounded view of what you're providing so that we can schedule activities um, that, that makes sense for your organization. Uh, we also are going to talk a little bit about the self-assessment, uh, what help you need, um, uh, how we can help you, um, any questions that you may have as far as that process goes. We'll start putting together the schedule um, for the visit. Um, we'll talk about the different activities that need to be scheduled, uh, what those look like, time frames, um, and that's a shared experience. That's not something we dictate when things will occur. Um, that's, we'll talk with the organization and see what works best for, for you and the people that you support. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about deadlines as far as the things that we'll need in advance um, and what works best for the organization. We'll also review what types of documents um, we're looking for, what to have available to us um, in advance. Um, we'll also look at the, the most secure ways to share those documents because we want to make sure we're maintaining confidentiality as well. And then uh, another thing that we'll talk about is next steps. So from the time of the planning call, which can run anywhere from four to eight weeks uh, in advance of the accreditation visit, um, we'll, you know, we're there for you. I mean, from that time up until the time we're there for that accreditation, any questions that you have, any supports that are needed, that's what we're there for. Uh, we're your contact. Um, we're going to help to make this a, 
successful partnership. We are not looking to set anybody up to fail. It is really about um, a, a successful partnership with the organization. One of the things that um, both Gretchen and I have talked about is that um, agency assessment. So Gretchen talked about gaining access to the portal system after that initial meeting with her. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that too, as one of the main things that you'll work on between the, our planning call and the accreditation visit is completing your basic assurances self-assessment in portal. So really what that is, is um, as an organization, taking a deep look at yourselves and self-assessing where you are at in each of those areas. You will receive complimentary access to portal through your accreditation. And then of course, like we talked about, guidance from CQL during that entire self-assessment process. This takes us right up to the on-site visit, um, which right now over the last year, these have been virtual visits. Um, and we have a webinar later on this year talking about uh, virtual visits and how those are going to look moving, moving forward post-pandemic. But any type of visit, no matter how it's held, can say, contains certain activities that will always happen. This includes things like basic assurances factor discussions. So using your organizational self-assessment as a guide, we take that to learn about the systems and practices throughout your organization and really where you see yourselves. We will also do focus groups. So typically focus groups contain, or it, it may consist of a group of direct support staff. It may be a group of people receiving services. Uh, it may be frontline supervisory staff, but it could also be a group of family members. Um, that is something that is discussed during that planning call. We also may schedule individual or targeted conversations specific to certain criteria that maybe uh, we talked about during that planning call as well, dependent on the types of services that are provided by the organization. We always do personal outcome measures interviews. Um, so having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with people to learn about how they define their services and their lives and what they want for themselves. We also will visit where people receive services. So this may be people's homes. It may be day programs. It may be where they work. Uh, wherever people are willing to allow us to come in and visit with them and see where services are provided. We'll also, of course, have discussions with leadership to learn about systems and practices and, and just the, um, the uh, learn about the organization as a whole. And then if the organization has engaged for our person-centered excellence accreditation or our person-centered excellence with distinction accreditation, there is that stakeholder meeting component that uh, Kate was talking about earlier. So, Gretchen is now going to lead us back into the next step. Well, celebrating your accomplishments and reflecting on everything that you've achieved as a team is really one of the most important steps in the process. And it's so important to remember, and we want this to resonate with you. It's important to remember that a partnership with CQL does not come with an expectation of perfection. We seek transparency and commitment and progress in the areas that all of your stakeholders, especially the people you support and your frontline staff or DSPs are telling you that is important to them. We will definitely help you celebrate. You'll receive a letter signifying your accomplishment, a printable certificate and a plaque. You'll receive a promotional kit that we encourage you to use to communicate your achievement and partnership with CQL. Next slide, please. Another important thing to remember though, is that hanging up that plaque and adding the CQL logo to your website is really just the beginning of our partnership. We're going to check back informally with you at least one, perhaps two additional times during your accreditation term. We definitely encourage organizations to reach out absolutely anytime you might need some support or assistance. Maybe there's new things happening at your agency that you need to let us know about. 
you might be looking for some resources or perhaps you'd like us to help facilitate a connection between you and another agency that might have some resources and ideas that would be helpful for you. We definitely want you to continue using Portal as a resource. The Portal subscription is uh, something that comes right along with an accreditation from CQL. So you'll receive full access to Portal. Portal will help you make organizational decisions based on sound data and reports, which you can access through that secure system. Definitely take advantage of our Facebook e-community. It's very active. People are on there all the time seeking advice and resources and sharing the same. And one of the best ways probably to stay in the know about all things CQL, including upcoming free webinars, research articles, portal alerts, accreditation updates, and, and frankly, a lot more, is to sign up for our Capstone newsletter. So you'll see on the next slide, uh, Seth is going to post some links that will be available for you to go in and check out more information on our website. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Liz at this point. Thank you, Gretchen. Uh, we do have, and we wanna talk a little bit about some upcoming uh, webinars. Um, we have, let's see, in May, um, uh, accreditation tools, which is a more in-depth discussion um, on basic assurances and the personal outcome measures tools um, that we use as the foundational elements of all of our accreditations. Uh, in July, uh, data and accreditation. So how really can CQL accreditation help your organization analyze and approve quality at both the individual level and the organizational level. In September, we'll talk a little bit about accreditation preparation. So getting ready for that first accreditation, you know, again, we want you to be successful. So um, just some tips and tricks on how to be successful and how to get ready and be prepared for that accreditation. And then yet to be announced is um, virtual accreditation. This is how we'll finish off our series of webinars this year. Um, but this is really, it will talk about how CQL has adjusted accreditation activities to be responsive to the current pandemic. And Seth will post in the chat box um, a link uh, that uh, provides more detail about these, uh, I believe as well as the ability to register for those. So next, um, we're all ready, if you can believe it, to the, uh, to the questions. So uh, we'd love to open it up to any questions that anyone may have. And, and Seth is going to help us out with this one. It looks like some have come in through the Q&A box. Yeah, so the one question we did receive was, do you have to be a certified Palm interviewer to have access to Portal Data System? I'll take that one. No, you do not. Accredited agencies have access, whether or not they have uh, a certified POM interviewer. So you have access both to POM and the basic assurances, self-assessments. Another question is, um, Someone asking about the, the video that Elizabeth, that you, you played at the front, I will post a link to that into the, the chat box for everyone to access in case they, they wanna watch it later. Thank you, Seth. Another question is, will the shared values assessment also be in portal? Currently, it is not, but that is something that we are discussing internally. It's currently completed on a, on a spreadsheet. Correct. Another question is, what are some of the examples of the documents needed for review? Uh, some examples, um, Include things like, oh, um, 
human rights committee minutes, uh, policies. We love to look at policies. So any policies and procedures um, that maybe you reference in your self-assessment. Um, like I said, human rights committee minutes. Um, oh gosh, there's so many things. Um, uh, it may include incident uh, report. <laughs> yeah, incident reporting, meta errors, um, looking at um, complaints. Um, maybe if you have a log where you track complaints and grievances, uh, any data that you collect, safety committee minutes, um, any kind of uh, incident management system or committee, um, any health documents. Um, Sometimes we'll always look for individual files. So we'll want to get a sense of what's kept at the individual level for people and follow up and making sure that the organization is responsive to um, health and safety needs. Assessments are a big one. Um, we're oh, you know, wanting to see what types of assessments that are being used. Um, and, and when I say that, it's with the caveat that they're completed, not just a blank um, assessment. Um, and then people's plans. Uh, we'd love to look at, at people's plans and, and see what those look like and, and what people are doing and, and the goals that are important to them. And just to be, you know, just another thing about the document uh, that we will be looking at, please don't think that we're going to sit in a, in a back room you know, of your agency and sit and read policies all day. We try to have those ahead of time so we can ask questions regarding those policies if we need further clarification. Uh, and since we, we also focus on the practices, we want to see how those policies are, are really implemented throughout your organizations. And we do that through our focus groups, through visiting with people, through the uh, personal outcome measures conversations that we have and through just conversations that we have with agencies. So uh, the policies, yes, are the kind of the bones of your organization, but those practices are really what keeps your organization moving forward. Another question we received, and I, I can help address this one, is how often does the Capstone newsletter come out? And that is our monthly newsletter that we send. And in comparison to some of the articles that we distribute, Capstone is really more of a deep dive into a specific topic where we share tools, tips, links to resources, all related to that topic. And I'll be posting into the chat box right now a link to sign up for not only Capstone, but also all of our uh, CQL email lists. Another question is, we are currently accredited with CQL. Do we have access to the portal data system? Seth, I can take that yes, one. Yes, you do. Oh, go ahead, Gretchen. <laughs> let's, go, let's go ahead and move to the next slide with our contact information. If you are a currently accredited organization and you need to get into or get back into a uh, portal, go ahead and email me and I can assist you with that. My email is g block at the council.org. And Gretchen, I'm just going to take a back um, one slide here too, so that we can leave this up. So as we're answering more questions, people can see. It's just the, um, you know, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And uh, we regularly post a lot of resources, articles, and other information for providers. And of course, we're also going to encourage you to join our e-community on Facebook. Uh, where members share resources, ask questions, provide support, and uh, work to identify solutions uh, for common challenges. And Seth will post, um, post this information uh, in the chat box as well for the e-community. Another we question we received, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Seth. Um, do you help organizations develop outcome metrics? Yes, that um, especially, and, and we help this throughout um, the accreditation term. It's, it's really helping agencies develop those metrics that are meaningful to them and identifying the metrics that they currently use and having conversations about 
what those metrics are actually telling you, if, if they're useful or if they're not. Um, agencies, you know, I think, especially with a first time agency, one of the things that is really eye opening is when we start talking about monitoring the basic assurances and pointing out those metrics that the agency already collects and where they fit with that monitoring of the basic assurances, I think is rather revealing for agencies. Um, I think all of our staff love uh, the, the data piece of CQL and we're you know constantly working with agencies to really figure out uh, what matters. And yes, you know, again, we do not expect perfection. We only expect progress. So we are happy to help you with that. Um, are there other questions, Seth or Liz? Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I think you were spot on on with that. But yeah, I mean, like like everything Kate said is is accurate. Uh, many of us love the data portion um, of the basic assurances and having those conversations and. And kind of helping you kind of figure out uh, what you already have, uh, what maybe would be beneficial to know more about, how to do that effectively and efficiently, and how to get started moving forward in that integrated quality management system. We have two questions that are kind of similar, so I'm going to kind of combine them. Um, can only parts of an organization be accredited? For example, if we serve the homeless too. Sure, I can answer that. Uh, we do prefer to look at the entire organization and it it really depends on how much of your organization is doing different services. So, but it impacts all parts of your organization. So for instance, if you serve, uh, you know, in your example, a population uh, who is homeless, then we would certainly take a look at some of your policies and procedures around that and uh, just, you know, have a conversation with you about how those services are provided. Um, our biggest areas of expertise are in uh, IDD and um, behavioral health supports, mental illness, substance use, uh, but we certainly do our credit agencies where part of their service provision is uh, you know, support for people who are homeless. They provide either um, temporary or permanent, you know, housing uh, and mental health supports or veteran supports. Uh, we certainly, you know, can, can work with you on that. And if you've got questions about it, you know, feel free to uh, shoot me an email and we can set up a time to chat. Another question. At the beginning, we indicated that um, CQL would use internationally recognized tools. Did that mean just CQL tools or other tools such as those through like the learning community for person-centered thinking, um, you know, external resources as well? Well, the focus is primarily on CQL's internal tools. Yes, we also um, discuss other tools that may support your, your organization. So, you know, whether they be um, different ways to accomplish some of your goals regarding the basic assurances or your What Really Matters plan, we certainly have uh, taken a look at other tools and we can help you use those tools. Excellent. And another question, how would you accredit an organization that also serves young children with developmental disabilities and kind of that early in intervention? Sure. Uh, the same way that we accredit um, all organizations, we do think that the basic assurances are, you know, uh, for all human service agencies. And we certainly accredit uh, agencies that either primarily uh, serve uh, infants and toddlers uh, or, you know, children of school age. Uh, we are uh, currently in the process of looking at the early intervention services in Tennessee and accrediting that 
whole system in the state. And we've, we've got several staff with really good experience uh, working with, you know, families with young children or school age children. Uh, so we, um, you know, and, and looking at the basic assurances, if you're confused about how something will fit your agency, you know, please feel free to reach out and we can, we can certainly, you know, uh, explain that to you. Excellent. And another question, um, how do you compare and contrast the CARF? And Liz, maybe um, so, slide six might be uh, useful too. I'm sorry, Seth, which one? Uh, slide six, uh, six. CQL difference. Okay. I think one of the differences is um, the partnership. You know, that we are, and, and please know that I have never worked for CARF and I don't have any uh, experience being accredited by CARF when I was um, on the uh, agency provider side. So from what I've, I've learned from other people, um, you know, it's, it, it's the emphasis on the partnership and the emphasis on progress. And, you know, those uh, mid-cycle meetings that we have, I think, are very valuable to organizations when we're looking at, um, you know, the, the progress the agency's made or maybe the progress that the agency couldn't make because of a pandemic, you know. Um, it's, really, it's really about meeting an agency where they're at and supporting them uh, to provide better quality services. As of right now, there aren't any Does that answer your interesting questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. No, I was going to see if that answered uh, the question. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I don't have, I can't give a side by side comparison, but um, I do think one of the major differences is is the access to our staff, and then that that tone of, you know, supporting the organization, and you know, providing resources throughout the accreditation term um, and, you know, helping you discontinue on your quality journey. And, and to build on what Catherine said too, we do have some um, uh, recently published art articles on our website um, that uh, showcase um, organizations that have recently gone through CQL accreditation. And some of those um, have had experiences with, um, with CAR. And so um, by looking at those, maybe reading through those, you would be able to, to get a kind of a better perspective from someone who's been through that process more recently. All right, there are no uh, lingering questions from anyone. So of course, as you can see from the contact us slide, if you have any you know, more individualized, personalized questions you want to, Send us. You can, of course, email us, call us, um, get in touch with us. That's, uh, that is all we have for today. Thank you all very much for attending. We, we really do appreciate it. And um, hopefully we can find ways to partner with you all in the future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Oh.